Hello and welcome to the course of HDL Digital Circuit Design. Today's topic is Verilog code for JK flip-flop using behavioral modeling style that to using case statement. In previous session we have seen JK flip-flop code uh, in behavioral modeling style using if else statement. Myself Shilpa Rudravar, Assistant Professor School of ENTC Engineering, MIT Academy of Engineering, IND Pune. So moving ahead with this today's topic. So in previous session we have discussed what is the JK flip-flop, what is the truth table of JK flip-flop and we have seen this code which is written in behavioral modeling style using if else statements. Now we have seen the simulation also. In this session we will be going ahead with the code uh, written in case statement using case statement. So you are able to see JK flip-flop symbol and truth table just we need to write a code for this in behavioral modeling style using case statement so model we have written the name to the model we have given jk and end module that as model started we need to end the model so that end model has been written input we have mentioned jk clock as well as the reset so fourth input we have considered as a J, uh, reset over there so it is written here now in behavioral modeling style output should be considered as a range data type and that's why we have mentioned this as a range which is outputs are q and qn where q is the normal output and qn is the complemented output uh, in behavioral modeling style we are writing the keyword like a always at and sensitivity list where my output depends upon positive edge of clock and positive edge of reset we have started with the begin and end of this particular uh, always is mentioned here we have written if inside it we have written reset reset is one so nothing has mentioned over here so reset condition is not mentioned whether for reset q is zero and qn is one it is not mentioned in previous case we are able to see we have mentioned that particular reset condition q assigned as a zero and qn assigned as a one now what is happening because of this this is also will be able to see and you can write this particular statement like this q assign 0 and q and assign 1 in this code also in this code also so if we are not writing what is the uh, sequence uh, consequence of that we will be seeing here that's why purposefully i have not written that statement so case inside the bracket on which particular case your output is going to depend so that's why jk inputs are there on which my output is going to change and that's why as j and k are separate we need to concatenate it using this concatenator operator which is uh, curly brackets and in between that we have written j comma k because we need to consider j as a first input and k as another and we are concatenating it as a j comma k so here case statement started so what is the case j is 0 and k is 0 so this is the first condition clock is already one reset is what uh, uh, if reset is one condition is this one that is not written but if the case is there we need to follow these things so that's why else condition when reset is one uh, you are having reset operation when reset is zero it will be performing this operation so jk so jk two bit binary number which is zero means jk is zero your output will be q so whatever the value of q is there whether it is 0 or 1 it will be assigned to the next state so q is assigned as a q and q and it will be the complement of that so complement q this approximation approximation sign indicates complement uh, uh, bracket uh, this is a semicolon which is the end of line now as there are more than two statement inside uh, after this uh, case so that's why you need to write a begin and end with the end if there is only one statement of output is there there is no need to write the begin and end second case is what two bit binary number 0 1 meaning of that 0 j is 0 and k is 1 so what is that condition that output will be 0 and that's why 0 is assigned to q and q and will be that complement of 0 that is 1 then next third condition is 1 0 where j is 1 and k is 0 so j is 1 and k is 0 output will be 1 that's why 1 is assigned to q and complement of that that is 0 is assigned to q1 and last one is the 1 1 when both are j and k are 1 1 your output will be toggling that's why q will be qn and that's why this qn value is assigned to q and q, uh, qn will be complement of this qn and this is the end so we are ending the end case we are ending this if and we are ending this always and that's why this particular end has been written twice now how to see the simulation waveform in the previous uh, example we have seen we have given the reset condition and that's why we are getting output over here so just moving ahead with that we are getting something over here but now in this case we are getting red color 
so red color indicates x that is the don't care at this moment i don't know whether it is 0 or 1 and that's why this particular red color uh, graph you are able to see so as clock is 1 over here and your reset is what 1 so when reset condition is there when reset is there this is the active high reset meaning of that when reset is 1 your system is going to reset and your operation will be taking place when reset is 0 so active high reset where the reset is 1 and your system is getting resetted now for reset condition as i have not mentioned any value of q that's why it is showing red that is neither zero means it might be zero it might be one so that's why red condition is mentioned now after this reset has been um, uh, gone to zero and clock is one so at that time you need to check with this another condition that zero zero so when it will be executing when clock is one and reset is zero so at this moment you are able to see sorry at this moment you are able to see this clock is one your reset is zero and your inputs to the jk are zero zero for that condition your q will be q and that's why whatever the value of q previously that is don't care that is getting repeated for this time period now at this moment again clock is changing to one that is positive h trigger is there it is changing from zero to one and over here you are able to see your reset is also zero means this condition will be applicable that your j is 0 and k is 1 so j is 0 and k is 1 clock is positive reset is 0 so your output will be 0 and that's why previously it was x now it will be 0 and this qn will be 1 because q is nothing but a complement qn will be complement of your q and that's why you are getting this thing now this clock is getting repeated for this condition your j and k are same that's why up till this condition your output will be same now at this moment what is happening at the positive edge of clock your j and k are changing so j is 1 now and k is 0 so you will be getting output like this output will be 1 and that you are getting over here so when j is 1 and k is 0 your output that is q is getting changed from 0 to 1 and this is changing from 1 to 0 so this is what output is one that you are able to see here and transaction is taking place at the positive edge of clock because this works on positive edge trigger so your inputs are changing at that um, positive edge clock pulse it will be giving you output now for this change of clock your inputs are same and that's why your output are same for this particular time period now at this moment your inputs are again changing from j and k are one so here at this moment your j and k both are 1 and clock is positive reset is 0 so your output will be qn that is the toggle and that's why whatever was the previous q that is getting complemented so 0 uh, over here it is 0 and this 0 is changed to 1 again after one clock pulse at this positive edge you are able to see this com uh, toggling is happening from 0 to 1 again next clock pulse 1 to 0 so that way every time depending upon how many clock pulses you are having every clock pulse your output will be toggled so this is what is the code for jk flip-flop written in behavioral modeling style using case statement you can prefer any modeling style you can prefer any way of uh, writing a code and just for the understanding purpose i have purposefully not mentioned reset condition so that you'll be able to see this type of situation where you are able to see red uh, color waveform which indicates don't care that at this moment that is not clear what is the value of q and qn so this is what is the code for your jk flip-flop using case statement now this is the test bench so now how to write a test bench over here you are able to see model module and end module and in between that you have written all the inputs which are con considered in the uh, very log that are considered as a range and what are the outputs are there that will be considered as a wire so that is mentioned over here then you need to link your test bench in uh, uh, inputs or stimulus with the uh, uut that is the code you have written in very log so that is called as a unit under test so that we have linked dot j inside j so that test bench output is connected to the input of your uut so that has been completed now this is very important so you have written initial and begin 
first you need to generate clock second you need to generate reset and third you need to generate jk inputs so over here you are able to see three initial uh, statements have been written first initial that is ended over here second initial that is ended over here and this is the th third initial statement that is ended over here so this makes you uh, this makes uh, the clarity of your test bench so here initial we have started with the begin we need to generate a clock and that's why at initial we have written clock is one now you need to change it to zero and that's why this forever is written which is the keyword and hash 10 that is after 10 time scale whatever will be the value of clock is getting inverted so not of clock has been written so if the clock is one it will be inverted and it will be um, zero and if it is zero previously it will be one and this will be happening after every 10 time scale so it might be nanosecond picosecond we can do depending upon which directive times directive compiler directive you have used so that is over here and this is the end so because of this initial statement it will be generating a clock which which having time period of 20 time scale so 10 for positive half cycle and 10 for negative so total time cycle or time period of your clock will be 20 time scale same way we need to generate a reset now here reset should be 1 to make the system reset and reset should be zero for normal operation and that's why here we have mentioned reset as a one for smaller time period and reset as a zero for more time uh, period so here this is 50 for that your system will be reset and for zero it will be working as a normal flip-flop where we will be giving different value of j and k over here and that's why this value should be provided it should be of higher time value and means here clock is generated here what reset is getting generated now you need to generate j and k and that's why initial begin j equal to 0 k equal to 0 so this is the first condition which will be for, which will be for 100 time scale second condition we have given again 100 time scale third condition and fourth condition so this way this particular initial loop will be generating j and k input this will be generating reset and this will be generating clock and as we have written three initial statements this all the three executes parallelly but whatever written inside that will be executing sequentially so over here because of this statement only you will be able to see this clock is generating reset is generating as well as jk are generating at a time but internally they are executing sequentially because after this initial blocks are getting executed clock is generating sequentially from 0 to 1 1 to 0 like that reset is also changing from 0 to 1 but everything that is clock reset and jk are executing parallelly internally it will be executing sequentially that data values are changing from 0 to 1 but this is because of this initial statement has been written twice and this is executing same time this particular loop is executing same time this uh, particular loop is executing but internally whatever is written which will be executing one after another so this thing you need to keep in mind it's like a always statement only so all the always loops whatever you are written that will be executing parallelly but whatever written inside the always statement that will be executed sequentially so these things you need to remember over there so hope you understood this what is meant by test bench how to write a test bench as well as how to write a code in uh, using case statement so thank you everyone thank you for patience listening happy learning